Hello again. I'm sometimes surprised by what short memories we have, both for things in our own lives and also historical events. For instance, although it took place just a little over 50 years ago, the Hong Kong virus, which originated in poultry, seems to have been quite forgotten. This is despite the fact that it killed at least one million and by some estimates as many as four million people. For various reasons, highly infectious viruses which have spread from an animal species to humans do tend to appear first in China. The species involved vary from birds and pigs to bats. From China, the diseases then make their way to the rest of the world, in most cases via the city of Hong Kong. The H3N2 virus was typical of this pattern. It was strongly suspected that it had arisen in mainland China and it was uh, dubbed the Mao virus uh, because of Mao Zedong, the leader of the country at that time. Once it reached Hong Kong, the crowded conditions there caused it soon to spread very, very rapidly. From there, it was taken by American soldiers who had served in Vietnam to the United States and reached Britain in December 1968. Although the mortality rate of the virus was not high, the scale of the pandemic meant that many people died of the virus. It was very, very infectious. That is to say they died of and not with um, the virus. As um, some viewers may be aware, it's common these days to talk about people dying with a virus. In those days, they died of this particular virus, which was virulent. Those who died from H3N2 were taken ill with a severe respiratory infection, and then they died when they contracted pneumonia as a result of this. One thing which was alarming is that it was more likely to be lethal to those under the age of 65, rather than striking only the old and infirm. In the United States, about 100,000 deaths were caused by the virus, while Britain got off relatively lightly. Between December 1968 and the spring of 1970, the virus claimed between 30 and 40,000 lives in Britain. Apart from the deaths, the disruption to ordinary life was considerable because so many people fell ill and were unable to work. Postal deliveries stopped in many places and there were no deliveries of milk either, which in those days came in glass bottles bought each morning by the milkman. If the milkman fell ill with the virus, then there was no milk. Hospitals were stretched to breaking point, not least because so many medical staff were also struck down by the infection. In some areas, hospitals had to turn away emergency cases. It didn't help that just as the first wave was passing, an epidemic of measles also began. The immunisation programme against measles in Britain only began in 1968, so this epidemic was a serious complication. The remarkable thing about the H3N2 virus is the way in which this pandemic faded from memory almost as soon as it was over. Millions of people died worldwide. There was uh, never any sense of panic at the time. In the description to this video I give a couple of links, including one to the reminiscences of a woman who was a young doctor in Scotland during the pandemic. She describes visiting homes without being issued with any protective clothing, masks or anything of that kind and there was no talk of social distancing. The pandemic of 1968 is interesting for the kind of things which did not happen during it, such as hysteria and panic. It appeared in Britain, claimed tens of thousands of lives, caused some disruption, but otherwise life went on as usual one is forced to speculate what the situation might have been if the people in 1968 had been able to get up to the minute news bulletins every second about what was happening. As it was, they saw what was happening in their daily newspaper and then perhaps listened to the wireless in the evening.
at any rate, nobody was particularly anxious or worried about the uh, 1968 pandemic. Uh, 